This video is focusing just on the hormones of the endocrine system. So we're going to make sure that we know the glands, know the hormones and know their effect. And if you know that, well, then you know quite a bit. So let's start at the top of the body, the head. So in the brain, we have the hypothalamus and this gland produces the hormone antidiuretic hormone or ADH. It's very important to know that although it's made by the hypothalamus, it's secreted or released from the pituitary gland. So what does ADH do? Well, antidiuretic hormone travels in the blood to the nephrons of the kidneys, where it's responsible for more water being reabsorbed. Still in the brain, we have the next gland, the pituitary gland. It is known as the master gland because it produces many hormones and some of these hormones that are produced will then have an impact on the production of other hormones in other glands. Some of the key hormones produced by the pituitary gland are important to know. So the first one is growth hormone and it stimulates or causes growth, particularly in the bones. Next, there's thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH, and this travels to the thyroid gland at the front of the neck and it causes the production of another hormone, thyroxine, which is a very important one. Luteinizing hormone travels in the blood to the ovaries where a surge in luteinizing hormone causes ovulation at approximately day 14 of the menstrual cycle. Luteinizing hormone also has an effect on the male reproductive system because it causes the production of testosterone by the testes. Follicle stimulating hormone travels to the ovaries where it causes the formation of the graphene follicle. Follicle stimulating hormone also has an effect in the testes because it causes the production of sperm. Oxytocin is another hormone produced by the pituitary gland and it travels in the blood to the walls of the uterus where it intensifies uterine contractions during labour. So many of these hormones you meet again in human reproduction. So don't worry, you have a chance to re-familiarise yourself with them there as well. There's one other hormone and that is prolactin, which is produced by the pituitary gland and travels to the glands in the breast where it stimulates the production of breast milk. There is a tiny gland in your brain, it's known as the pineal gland, and it produces the hormone melatonin. Melatonin controls your circadian rhythm. So among other things, your sleep cycle, when you wake and when you sleep. At the front of the neck is the thyroid gland and it's shaped a bit like a butterfly. It produces the hormone thyroxine and thyroxine is very important. It regulates metabolism. On the back of your thyroid gland are four smaller glands known as the parathyroid glands. They produce the hormone parathormone and it controls blood calcium levels. Located on the top of each kidney is an adrenal gland and each adrenal gland produces the hormone adrenaline, which is responsible for your fight or flight response. So it enables your body to respond to stress. Located in your abdominal cavity is the pancreas and the pancreas has particular cells known as the islets of Langerhans or to help you spell them the islets of Langerhans and they produce the hormone insulin. Insulin is responsible for controlling your blood glucose levels so when you produce insulin it lowers the amount of glucose in your blood. The females have two ovaries and they produce the hormone oestrogen. Oestrogen causes the endometrium to develop the lining of the uterus and it's also responsible for the secondary sexual characteristics in females at puberty. The ovaries also produce the hormone progesterone. Progesterone maintains the endometrium in readiness for a pregnancy. The testes in males produce the hormone testosterone. Testosterone causes the secondary sexual characteristics in males at puberty. So know the glands, know the hormones, know their effect. That's a good place to start. And remember, you'll meet many of them again in human reproduction. Best of luck.